It's also a big book of what the fuck, but you know, that kind of goes with the I don't know part. Hey everybody, I'm Catherine and I'm here today with a book review for Magonia by Maria Devana Headley. I had issues with this book. I mean, I liked it, I think. I don't want to read a sequel. Like, this book was more than enough. It could definitely be like a standalone book for me and I'd be totally fine with it. But I spent almost the entirety of the time that I was doing it on audiobook questioning whether or not I actually was enjoying it. So this is definitely one of the strangest books I've read in quite a while. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm kind of floored on how to properly put into words exactly what I think of it. So this book is about a girl named Azare who is basically um, drowning here on earth as a normal girl because she's unable to breathe in and process oxygen properly. And it causes her a lot of grievances, a lot of health issues, she's in a hospital a lot, and then she dies. But she doesn't die. And it's just, that's where I'm just, yeah. That is the point where I was like, what the fuck? is going on. And then I'm like, do I like what's going on? Can someone explain to me what's going on? And it just gets weirder from there. So this book is told in dual perspective between Aza and her best friend, potential future boyfriend, Jason. And between her perspective and his perspective, you kind of get three quarters of what the story's supposed to be. And that last 25%, you're just like, huh? What? Uh, huh? Yeah. So like I said, I had issues with this book. I mean, I liked the way that it was done. It was done in a very clever manner. I liked the style of writing for the most part. There were times, and it was strictly like a character device that I did not like about each of the characters. I hated just having to listen to Jason recite the numbers of Pi. But I understand how it pertains to his character and how it elevated his character. And it made sense to me. I just didn't really like it. The same goes for Aza and her weirdness. I didn't always like it, but I understood it. So it's just like a personal hang up about this. I enjoyed the quirkiness of this. I loved the alligator costume bits. I love the random recitation of pointless facts. I love just the weirdness, but I don't know if I love the whole. Because the whole was just maybe a little too weird. A third of the way through this book, one of my actual notes on Goodreads is what the fuck am I reading? Like that pretty much sums up my feelings on this book. What the fuck am I reading? This is one of those books that it's kind of about like everything and nothing at the same point. I mean, even almost two thirds of the way through, I was like, I still don't know what I'm supposed to be reading. I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't understand why any of this matters. But I wanted to keep reading. I wanted to know how it ended. I needed to know how everything worked. Like, I honestly, I would like to sit down with this author and just have her explain the world to me and how all this works because I'm just like lost. But there were a lot of parts that I loved about this book. I loved the idea of like a whole other world on top of ours. I hated the fact that they were basically thieving pirates and she doesn't actually make that connection. Instead, she just becomes one. I hated that Aza didn't really think for herself ever once she got to Magonia. She just kind of took on the belief of whatever she was told. She didn't stop to think like, oh yeah, maybe, no. 
And yet she did it as a person, as a human when she was on Earth before she went to Magonia. I liked the idea that there was something really special about her, that it was um, foreshadowed within the first couple of chapters of the book before she gets to Magonia. Um, I think that that was done really well, but I feel like the character just had this kind of go to her head and then didn't do anything about it until pretty much the very end when her love interest was basically threatened with his life. Like, yeah, just weirdness. One of my other notes within my Goodreads app is the fact that it was 97% of the way through this book. And yeah, I did the actual math on how to figure that out because, um, no, wait, this was through Overdrive and from the library, so it actually breaks it down to 97% for me. But that was when she actually started to ask the important questions about why she was supposed to do what she was doing and all of that, like, my mind was blown. I couldn't believe it took her that long to ask simple questions. I felt I had a lot of like hypotheses about this book. There's a teacher in the high school from the very beginning and there were things mentioned about him, specifically the possibility of tattoos, which later kind of comes into play and she's just like, oh, this looks so familiar. And I'm like, your teacher probably had the same tattoos. But my thoughts on this were never like, I was never told whether I was right or wrong. And I feel like, is there going to be a sequel? Let's see. So there's going to be a sequel. I feel like, I'm sorry if this ends up being a spoiler, but I feel like her high school English teacher is one of the breath people and he was like, I don't know, protecting her or something or watching her or spying on her. Like, I feel like the teacher is gonna come back into this. Honestly, that might be the only reason I actually read the second book next year when it comes out sometime in 2016 would be to see if I am right because honestly, I like knowing when I'm right or when I'm wrong. I don't know if this book was meant to be like a real build up for the sequel. I don't know if once the sequel comes, if it probably should have just been combined into one giant ass book like Game of Thrones or something size and just get it all over with once. I don't know if I'm gonna read it. Probably will if I can get it from the library, I'm not gonna lie. But I just, I also don't know how I feel about this. This is just a big book of I don't know. I am really glad that I read this book or, you know, did it on audio, especially with all the hype that has been surrounding it, specifically on, you, you know, YouTube and the booktube and the book community in general. I wanted to be able to see for myself what the big deal was. I still don't understand what the big deal is. I love the book cover. The book cover is gorgeous. The writing style, though incredibly weird, was really well done. I liked the way that the author wrote characters. Um, I just hated the way that some of the characters were written. Does that make sense? Not really, but it does up here and that's all that matters. I liked the world building that the author did. I thought that was done really well. I have all of these questions that I probably don't really care if I get an answer for, but eh, eh. Would I recommend this book to anyone? Hmm, that is a good question. I don't know. It's a big book of I don't know. I would probably only recommend this to you if you are a fan of the weird, if you can digest the weird. Um, if you just want to know what the hype is all about, get it from the library. That's my suggestion. I definitely wouldn't recommend this book to anyone who is a huge fan of contemporary because this is like, I like reading fantasy and science fiction. This is so far off from even that. It's like its own separate little room off the genre. Like I, I, 
I don't even know, like bird people, man, bird people. Is that a spoiler? One of my big questions throughout this book though, which I actually wouldn't mind an answer for, is, okay, so the situation geographically of Magonia is above, you know, the earth proper. So I know from science class, because I took earth science in university um, and even in high school, like I know that the makeup chemically of the air as you go higher up into the different spheres of all of that, the stratosphere, whatever, all those things, I know that the, the chemical makeup of it is all different as opposed to what we're breathing down here. Um, so why wouldn't, like, in the hospital, if she's having so many issues breathing oxygen, why wouldn't doctors kind of try and, like, tweak for, like, you know, a breathing tube type deal? Um, why wouldn't they try different kind of combinations of different makeup of the natural air within Earth, just, you know, the higher the altitude, the less oxygen there generally is. Why wouldn't they have tried something like that in the many years, the almost 16 years that Ava Ray was in and out of the hospital because of breathing problems and obvious breathing issues with that she was having even when she wasn't in the hospital. Like her mom works at a hospital. And in the book, they do briefly talk about, you know, experimental stuff that her mom kind of illegally does to help her. Um, I, I just, this is one of my big questions is like, why wouldn't you try more research on less drugs and just see if like higher altitude makeup chemically of air would be easier to breathe. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's it as far as my review goes. I would say be cautious if you go into reading this, but go with a very open mind and make your own decisions because what I don't understand, maybe you totally get, I don't know, maybe it's just my brain isn't like twisted or, you know, enough or it's too twisted or something to just easily comprehend what's going on. And on a side note, I am giving away a copy of Tonight the Streets Are Ours by Layla Sales on my channel here. I'm going to link down below the video you go to in order to enter by commenting. All you have to do is be a subscriber and live within North America and comment on that video and you're entered. And I'm going to draw a winner at the end of July. So you still have a couple days and then you can, you know, maybe see if you've won. There haven't been that many entered yet, so your chances are still quite good. And if you do enter, this lovely book will be yours at least a month before it is released in September of this year. So you get to read it before all of your friends and make them super jealous. And that's it for me for this video. So thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to click that little subscribe button. Where is it? Here? Here? There? I don't know. It's somewhere around this screen. If you want to see more of my face twice a week, every, what is it, Tuesday and Friday, I try to post. Don't always make it on those days, but I try. Try two videos a week. I figure I'm working, I'm a student, two videos a week is something I can easily do. We'll see how that changes come September and I'm up to my eyeballs reading, you know, not fun books like these and having to read weird shit for school. Who knows? So until next time, guys, as always, happy reading. Uh, 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 I just... Mm.